Hey, everybody. Uh, we're just going to do a hard open here for this episode. So no music, no intro, no Patreon uh, stuff. I'm just going to jump into this. Um, wow. Jeff and Control Robinson has passed. I mean, I think you guys are the same as me. I, nobody saw this coming. You know, what a shock. He was 33 years old. Um, an extraordinarily talented guy, a great friend. Um, and in this little recording, I'm just going to talk about him and my memory of him. And uh, before I do that, you know, when someone like this passes, someone who's well known and very loved, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy. It sends this wave of trauma across the world. Um, he was a really beloved guy. So, you know, if you need to get therapy or, you know, talk to people, definitely do that. Make sure you're taking care of yourselves over the next, you know, days and weeks to come. So, um, yeah, uh, I've known Jeff for about half of my life. He was, I met him first online and, um, he was an incredible Zerg player. He had a really, really unconventional uh, approach to the way that race was played. Uh, at the time there was a lot more emphasis on just macro and build up, and he was such a clever player and he was somebody that was always able to tactically, uh, outthink somebody and, and out, outmaneuver them. And, uh, he had a lot of great surprise plays and, uh, he was a very deceptive player to play against. Um, the first time I actually, uh, met Jeff in person, I did not know that I was actually that it was actually him. This is a very weird story. So uh, I guess most of you guys know Jeff as, you know, a talented StarCraft player um, or a talented Warhammer player or great caster, but he was also great at a lot of other stuff. He was an excellent uh, competitive debate uh, debater. Um, he did parliamentary debate uh, at university and he'd been doing it, I believe, all the way in, uh, through high school as well. But I was recruited onto the debate team at my university uh, without really having much experience. But um, uh, we were on a debate trip. It was, I think it was my second debate trip we had gone on to. And uh, not surprisingly, I died off early on in, in one of the early rounds. And what my debate co coach told me to do was just shadow the best team that we had. And um, so I did. So I, I followed them around uh, as they were trying to continue to advance. And I, we, I was in Wyoming uh, at this tournament and I sat down and I was looking uh, at the two teams and the opposing team, uh, that was, it was Jeff. He was there, but I had never met him in person before. And um, he looked at me and kind of gave me a weird look and I was kind of staring at him. I was trying to be sensitive to the fact that there was about to be a competitive debate round going on. And I thought, is that him? Because uh, remember, guys, this is all before streaming. Uh, there was not a lot of video coverage uh, of tournaments. In fact, I think at that time, Jeff had not been to a live uh, event uh, that I had been to. Uh, he started showing up to WCGs much later than some of the rest of the uh, players. And th th by the way, WCG was the big event at the time. If you were a Brood War player in the United States, you were trying to compete in those tournaments. And so I... Um, I, I thought maybe I should go ask him if it's him. And I thought, no, this is too weird. This is, this can't be right. Uh, I had only seen one or two photos of him before. And I, I basically didn't say anything. So the first time I saw him, I watched him debate. Uh, he dunked on my university's team, by the way. And I just thought, you know, it's going to be too weird. If I go up and, t and ask this guy this question and it's, <laughs> and it's not him. That's just so weird and awkward. You know, asking somebody, are, are you, I'm sorry, do you play this computer game? I think I recognize you in these computer game tournaments. Um, and so it wasn't until years later when um, I saw him again. Uh, and then we talked about that moment. And I thought, oh, God, that's so crazy. Yeah, I didn't know that he had, he was doing debate. Um, and he said the same thing. He thought, oh, I should have come and said hi. He had the same reaction that I did where it's like, this is too random. This is too weird. Um and so th that was the first time I, I, I saw him. He was an excellent public speaker. Uh, it's no surprise that he became an excellent uh, StarCraft commentator. And 
going on from there, uh, I really got to know Jeff uh, at one of the first tournaments he was at. I think it was in Orlando, but, you know, I went to so many StarCraft tournaments when I was younger, and these things, you know, you're always in hotels and convention halls, so everything sort of blends together. Um, but uh, I remember I had known Artosis for years before uh, I had known Jeff that, like, face-to-face, -face, I should say. We all knew each other online. And um, I remember Artosis meeting me in the lobby, and uh, he's, he said, in controls here. And I said, oh, yeah? And I, I kind of looked at him like, what's he like, you know? Because um, we all talked massive trash online. Um, we spent a lot of time in a, in a channel called Clan X 17 And, um, you know, with basically no sponsorship money for any non-Korean StarCraft back then, there was just so much shit talk and um, banter. Um, and so I was really curious to see, uh, you know, this guy who was obviously very witty and great with quips what he was going to be like in person because sometimes you meet uh, you know you have a persona online and then you meet the individual in real life and it's you know a totally different person but he i remember dan looking at me and he said oh he's cool you're gonna like him um and yeah i remember hanging out with him and he was so funny and he, i remember him actually telling me to check out the um songs of ice and fire books the game of thrones storyline like Way before this HBO show was out, he was trying to convince us to do it. And I remember telling him, I don't want to read a fantasy book, man. Those are so long. I don't have time. I've got too much stuff in school right now. Um, I was definitely wrong about that one. I should have started reading those books earlier. But uh, yeah, he was he was an awesome guy. And um, basically, when I had started picking up casting gigs, um, that was when he really started to compete in, in tournaments. So I got the pleasure of... Um, casting him play and become the USA champion uh, for StarCraft One and represent the United States. Um, th that was a really, really cool moment. I think a lot of times people think of Jeff and they actually forget that this guy was a phenomenal StarCraft One player. Um, I would not say he was the favorite to win that tournament, but he did it. it he was excellent and um, very cool stuff. And you know, after that moment, I ended up flying out to Korea, and uh, Dan came out shortly after. Artosis came out shortly after. And so a, a lot of my relationship with Jeff at that time had been uh, kind of following his his career. I mean, nobody knew that esports was going to be uh, as big as it would be. I think there was a lot of uh, high expectations from people like me. Uh, and Jeff and, you know, the guys that came from StarCraft 1 who committed to working in StarCraft 2. But um, it, it, it was really incredible to see when he joined EG um, just the kind of charisma he had. It's important to remember that, you know, when I was like when I was in high school. OK, so I'm 34 years old. When I was in high school, games were played, but they were still uh, taboo. It was not a, a, a totally culturally accepted thing yet. And so when he got onto EG, the level of uh, charisma, he was so good at interviews. He was smart about the brand. And he, he, you know, he had a different look to him as well. I, he didn't look like a stereotypical nerd. Um, Jeff, if I understand correctly, was a state champion powerlifter. And so you had this huge muscly guy um, with tattoos, uh, witty, funny, smart. Um, and you know, he did a lot for that brand EG. And, and I, I really do not believe esports would be the same without, uh, contributions like his, uh, there, because he really was able to push this stuff into the mainstream. Um, and you know, it was, it was, it was really cool to see him do that. I was in Korea. We were trying to get, um, some kind of a show, obviously now that shows GSL. Um, and, uh, you know, then I remember watching Jeff cast NASL and, you know, it's funny cause Dan and me had talked about this for a while, um, in the very, very early days. I'm sure you guys have been familiar with all the subs that we had, um, at GSL, um, uh, through, through the entire eight year span of the show. It's going to continue going on, of course, but, um, what the, the first person that we really wanted to have alongside us was actually Jeff, but you know, he just could not leave the States. Um, so I just, 
I, I was really excited to see that there was another StarCraft show um, sprouting up over in California, NASL, because I knew he would be a good caster. I mean, after seeing him do public speaking, I thought, oh, this guy's a natural. Um, and so that was very cool to see him do that. And one of the things I love about Jeff is just he, he brings his own style, his own brand of humor. Uh, it's important to note that at that time, I think everybody's pretty used to how Dan and me do GSL or kind of the fun vibe and feel of WCS events. But, you know, when we first started casting, there was actually a lot of pushback from uh, some people in the industry that we needed to be more serious or we shouldn't be making jokes, which, um, you know, I always disagreed with and clearly Jeff did too. You know, it's, it was okay to have a little bit of fun while we're doing this. And, you know, StarCraft people, I've always found out of all the different games I've played and the people I've met from those games, uh, StarCraft people just have a sense of humor. And I think you have to because the game is so hard. Uh, you know, Gallo's humor <laughs> kind of comes into play. Um, the self-deprecation, stuff like that. So that was that was really awesome to, to see him um, start casting and to kind of watch this transition of him becoming a professional player um, and being on a team to being a caster and then a streamer. Um, I, I really, really enjoyed my time getting to uh, be with Jeff at these events, particularly the WCS ones. You know, uh, this is a very unique job and I'm really lucky because the people that I cast with are my best friends. And it's really cool that the you know, when you play, <clears throat> excuse me, when you play games, I think it's generally thought of as, you know, uh, you're not going outdoors, you're not experiencing stuff, but it's, it's really been the opposite experience for me. I've gotten to travel the world, I've gotten to meet all these people through games. And um, it was really cool kind of having a little StarCraft family that I would get to meet up with overseas every a few months or so. And um, just getting to spend time with them at events and, and, and hang out and, um, you know, all the fun that you see us have, uh, see us having on camera. We're having as much fun off camera too. It, it is a real blast. And every event that Jeff was at, I knew I was going to have so much fucking fun because he is just, he is so funny. I mean, he's had me laughing so hard that I'm almost in, like, I can't breathe. I'm almost in pain. Um, and it, it was a real treat to work with him. You know, those, those desk segments, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, those desk segments we would have, uh, eventually some people were calling them the in control spots because he was the guy who was able to make those so interesting. Uh, let, let me cl clarify for a second. So there's, you know, when you're watching these shows, there's a part where there's two casters uh, casting, right? And then you know, when the games are done and the casters summarize that, then it will either be at a commercial or it'll be at this uh, this panel, basically, usually of three to, or four people. And um, I've always found that those panels are kind of hard to do, uh, especially uh, they got, they've gotten smoother and easier now. But at the time, you just sort of you didn't know how long you guys were going to be up there for. A lot of times uh, these segments were used if there was a technical difficulty. Um, and so you're there to kind of fill time and, and keep the audience engaged. And Jeff was a master at turning this into entertainment. Um, think of every entertainer you can think of. Think of comedians. Think of, um, you know, uh, musicians, actors. And, and, and then look back at Jeff. He is as talented or more talented than anybody else you can name. I mean, the guy is a natural. It's already one thing to be able to analyze uh, and talk about StarCraft, which is, it is just the hardest game. Um, but it's another thing to make it so funny and fun uh, at the same time. And he was really just so good at that. Um, yeah, I mean, he was he, he was incredible. And, and those he really brought to life uh, those segments of the tournaments where um, I think it... it had the possibility of ending up, of ending up becoming bland or dry or 
or lame. And I think he made it really funny and, and really cool. Uh, and I loved the few moments I did get to cast with Jeff. That was a lot of fun as well. Uh, we would always be messing around. Um, a lot of times when I would do the uh, the player intros, because he was always he would always make fun of me of my hype casting and stuff. Uh, when we do the player intros and I, and I'd be casting with him, um, you know, there's this thing where you're like in the bottom right and the you know the camera's kind of getting ready to zoom in, and then you know eventually you shout the player's name like T Y. Uh, whenever I do that with him, I'd always try to grab Jeff uh, by the dick right as I did it to try to get him to laugh into the mic. Um, and he was always, we'd always, people always trying to kung fu my hands uh, off of him, of me either grabbing his ass or trying to grab his dick um, <laughs> at, at those segments. And uh, he, but he, was a, he was a great uh, guy to commentate with. He was so fun and he was so smart and so articulate. And, you know, we could have fun and, and mess around. Uh, in a cast, or we could really just have, uh, a, a, I think, a super cool analytical cast that was a real treat to unpack. So, yeah, um, he was a wonderful person. You know, he always stood up for what he believed in. Um, he was a guy who had convictions. He was really, I think, I think at, at times, I think the internet um, misunderstood him. I think that sometimes people thought that you know, some of these moments where he's trying to bring comedy out or, or trying to tease people on camera. Sometimes I think people thought maybe he's a bully or, or something like that, but it could not be farther from the case. I mean, the guy was a real sweetheart and a, a really good friend. Um, and he always tried to do what was right. And uh, I'm, I'm going to miss him, man. He was one of a kind. And... Um, I don't know. I guess I don't have much else to say. You know, uh, I've experienced a few um, people passing in my life, um, but never quite something like this. You know, it really, it reminds you, um, it reminds you of what's important. You know, I, um, there's times I'm sure you guys can relate where you're thinking about, you're worried about some shit that in retrospect does not matter. <laughs> and, um, Jeff's sudden departure absolutely reminded me of that, you know. Let's uh, let's remember to be good to each other while we're here, you know. Um, I'm not a religious person, and so I, you know, I, I kind of believe that memories are all we really have, you know, and I'm really glad that Jeff left me with so many happy memories. Um, if you guys want to find more of Jeff's stuff out there... Um, I mean, there's plenty of YouTube videos uh, if you want to get some catharsis. A lot of highlight clips. I personally, I think the uh, the StarCraft One stuff that we did, the most recent stuff that was kind of tied with the 20 year anniversary and uh, the launch of Remastered, uh, the Holiday Bash, uh, the the full stuff of that is on YouTube, and you can find that. Uh, we had a lot of fun uh, doing that stuff. And um, I guess before I close this out again, be sure to take care of yourself. Make sure you're getting enough sleep. Drink a lot of water. I know sometimes when you, when you can experience trauma like this, uh, you know, you sort of stop taking care of parts of your life or yourself, you know. So, um, and definitely, you know, if you need to get a therapist or a counselor, I absolutely would encourage you to do it. There's no reason to not. Um, and uh, I don't know. I'm going to miss you, Jeff. You were a really fucking awesome dude. Um, I'm going to be resuming the regular schedule for the podcast um, next week. Uh, I'll be doing an episode with my brother that I recorded in Hong Kong for our family trip. Uh, obviously, it's all this was all done before uh, this tragedy with Jeff. Um, so there's going to be sort of kind of it might seem incongruent. Um, and it is incongruent for that reason, because <laughs> I recorded it and then I plan on releasing it. And obviously this happened and I don't want to put it out then. Um, so guys, thank you so much for joining me and uh, let's keep Jeff in our minds and our hearts. And uh, again, be good to each other. I love you guys. Uh, we'll be back with a, a normal episode next week of the Tasteless Podcast. I love you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.